let's let's talk about my conundrum, Mark. Can we talk about it? I'm gonna need your help. So here's here's the conundrum. So I've uh, I've been taught to give without receiving, and it's something that I always do. I I've been um, just even starting my YouTube channel. I just constantly do it, and I don't expect anything in return. I just in the in the context of YouTube, I try to promote smaller channels. I try to let them be guests on my channels. I try to do so many things to help out other people. And it's recently come up where the people who I have helped, where I've never asked for a single thing in return, are just turning on me and saying that I manipulated them and I'm selfish and egotistical and narcissistic. And I'm sitting here like, what? Like, it, it's like, it's just baffling to me. And I was thinking about writing a blog post about it, but since we're already talking, like, how how do you deal with that? Because I'm not expecting anything return, but like, I think the only thing I am expecting is just like a little common decency to be able to step back and say, wait, what am I talking about? This guy has never asked anything of me and all he's done is tried to help me. I don't know. It's, do you, channel me, Mark. I don't know what's going on. Uh, um. So I'm going to channel some of these people that are giving you a hard time. Uh-oh. Okay. So this could get us both hated. Um, so I'm someone who you've done a lot for, and it's true. You've never asked for anything. So why am I so upset with you? I'm so upset with you. So I'm one of these haters who you've done a lot for without asking anything. The way I function in the world, Chris, is I look for reasons to distrust because if I look for reasons to distrust, that justifies my anger. Mm. And then I don't have to say to myself, maybe I'm just a freaking angry guy who hates the world. I don't particularly want to own that. I don't want to own that I'm a person who just hates because it goes against me. And so when you are generous, I like it at first, it's kind of novel, but the point is, it's too upsetting for me to think to myself, you know, I might be able to trust this guy because my whole personality is focused on a bracelet. The bottom of Eric Erickson's social, psychosocial thing is it's based on basic mistrust and based on no matter what I say or scream at the world, it laughs at me, it disregards me. And so I built up a whole story uh, I'm not angry. The world has really hurt me, laughed at me. And so, you know, we make our way into each other's worlds and you're being kind of generous. And I'm up against an unconscious roadblock, which is I intellectually know it's not the best thing, but to function, I need to be distrustful. So I need to be project on you all kinds of ulterior motives. I need to project on you that you're doing me wrong in some way, even though I have no evidence for it. Because if it turns out that you're not, then I'm the crazy one. So either you're a manipulator who's doing something, uh, which so I can say, see, I told me so, the world is just like that. Mm -hmm. Or if it turns out you're not a manipulator, I'm crazy. I'm crazy, paranoid, angry, retaliatory, uh, all of which cause, triggers, you know, probably even deeper depression and addiction. And so it's it, it's almost like it's almost too painful to believe you, to believe that you care about me, and it's not and it's, and, and it's all unconscious. Mm. Yeah. Like I shared with you, I shared with you an anecdote. And this is a slightly different case. I'm not sure if I shared with you this in the last thing, but there was a woman that I coach. I think the world of her. And she's really high functioning. And she's a little guarded. But you know, people open up to me. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know why, but people do and and they just do. And I said to her, I said, I know what you're most afraid of. And it's not being rejected, judged, or criticized. None of what you like all of which you have defense mechanisms against. That's not what you're afraid of. You're annoyed by them and sometimes they get you nervous. She said, what am I afraid of? And I looked at her and I said, what you're afraid of is feeling unconditionally safe and unconditionally loved 
and there's nothing you can do to earn it or lose it. It's just there. And she took a double take and then it's, it's almost like her head went back like, and, 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 and she just, she went, and she just collapsed on the couch and she just started sobbing. And I said, what's going on? She said, you hit a nerve that's so deep. I can't get to it uh -huh. because see, why she was afraid of that is because she's lived her whole life with it never being safe ever. Uh -huh. So she swept things under the carpet. The worst thing she swept under the carpet is, you know, uh, having a close loving relationship is not in the cards for you. So just give it up. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, which was a great loss for her. And so what happened is it ripped the whole carpet up. Uh, and I think part of it is I have been seeing her for a while. And I think her experience of me is that, and I think I hope most people's experience, including the suicidal people I see, they feel unconditionally safe. There's no judgment. I never get disappointed in people. I get disappointed for them. I'm dis are you disappointed? I'm disappointed for you because that's now going to trigger a lot of <laughs> coming your way. <laughs> And I'm sorry, but it's inevitable. We'll just have to walk through it. Yeah, it's... Does any of that make any sense? No, it makes, it makes too much sense. And as you're talking about this, and like, I, for me personally, just my personal experience with this, because I, I think I told you before, I was working at a very large treatment center here in Las Vegas. One of the largest inpatient drug and alcohol treatment centers in the in the entire country of the United, like it had, the inpatient was like 150 something beds. I think there was only one other treatment center that had more beds than that. So I've just dealt with a massive amount of people every single day. And there were times when people came up to me like drug addicts, you know, we get a little angry when you take our drugs and alcohol away. I've had people come up to me, threaten me, call me names, all sorts of stuff, just everything, you know? I'll never forget, there was one kid, I did nothing but sit with him and talk with him and everything like that. And one day he snapped, um, he found out he had to get discharged earlier than he expected, he was scared to leave, whatever. He cussed out everybody, and then I'm standing at the front, just minding my own business, and he comes trudging down past the front desk, and he walks right up to my face and he says, and f you too, Chris. And he storms out the front door, leaves, he goes AWOL, right? It didn't bug me. It did not bug me one bit, I was like, this guy is hurting right now. I was like, this guy is hurting right now. He is scared. You know, he's hurting. That wasn't at me. That was, you know, that's not me. It's him. And he actually ended up coming back. He came, uh, he found me. He apologized to me. He gave me a hug and he told me. That's part of why I know this. He's like, Chris, I was scared. I was so scared. And that story had a happy ending. Last I heard, he was like two years sober. So spot on. But anyways, what I'm getting at is I, I, I worked at such a large treatment center and I had this happen all the time, right? All the time. But I'm trying to understand why it's harder for me to handle it now, right? But, you know, like I was saying, I think part of it is I was dealing with 150, 160 people. Now I'm dealing with tens of thousands of people. So maybe it's just I'm not used to... I don't know, the, the number, the volume of it. Now, and it's... I, I wonder if this is it, because uh, I'm getting to know you and I hope this will be a series. A lot of times people who have too much anger, they want to vent it. They won't vent it at someone they feel who can't take it. They won't vent it at someone who... Mm. And so because of the nature of your voice and your brash and whatever, I got a lot of anger. I need to vent it. You know, I don't know. You know, I'm going to aim it at Chris because I think he can take the hit. He talks like a truck driver. I think he can handle it. I mean, I can hit him with my best shot. I'm not going to destroy the guy. Whereas if I walk by the person who's so it's oversensitive, you know, I want to vent, but I don't want to kill this frail, you know, uh, this frail hand holder who just wants to love me back, you know, that makes me want to gag because I have too much anger. But there's something about Chris, the way he's in your face, you know, and I think he can take it. But I, it may be the challenge for you is that down deep, your, 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 your alter ego is, you know, you can, you, you can play the rough, gruff exterior, 
But there is that part of you that down deep feels hurt by, it feels actually hurt and wounded. And then you, the hurt wounded goes into your anger issue. Hurt wounded will f this. You know, and then you do a cluster f in your head you know, <laughs> and it becomes another show. So, I mean, it, it's all to the good, Chris. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's something I haven't thought about in ages. In ages, it's it's one of those things where I don't know if it's right or wrong, but you know, growing up, that was kind of my thing too. I had there was myself and then there was my sister. My sister got a lot more attention and coddling because my parents looked at me like Chris can take it. Chris takes yeah. care of himself. Chris is going to get through this, right? But her, they were always kid gloves, and she's my older sister and everything like that. And you saying that, like, I was just talk talking to my girlfriend uh, yesterday. I was talking with a family member, and, like, that side of my family is, like, Sicilian, and we just kind of go back and forth. And uh, I, I was explaining to my girlfriend, I was like, I think we talk to each other like that because we know each other can take it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, and you saying that, and I'm, and I'm just kind of thinking – I'm thinking too because something that I've been really in my head about lately is the 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 double standards, right? The hypocrisy, the double standards in the community. People doing the same thing as me or worse and nothing happens, right? And then when you put it in words like that, I look at it, I'm like, oh, well, that person, they might have a complete break if people came at them. And whereas like you're saying, I'm this big, loud, kind of in your face kind of guy, it's maybe it makes more sense to take that out on me. And well, maybe... you, can, you know, it's interesting. You give people the say in people's minds, they're thinking, I got a lot of anger. I'm, I'm cruising for bruising. You know, I, I, I you know, I, I'm not, you know, I could, I suppose I could go full on steam and just jam my head into the wall, but you know, I'm looking for a fight. You know, and you'll see this at a lot of bars. I'm looking for a fight. I don't care who I want to get into a fight. And, and you look at Chris and you say, uh, he looks like he could take it. People aren't afraid of hurting your feelings. And one of my challenges is people are afraid of hurting my feelings. Oh, we don't want to hurt you, uh, Dr. Goes. Oh, you're so mm. loving, so kind. And I know they're holding back. And so sort of in my evolution, uh, you know, there is a part of me that comes from a softer, kinder, non-brash way but I'm looking to adjust that and maybe even play my alter ego, my maybe maybe the non-awful mm. part of my, maybe the asshole part of me. It's very freeing when I play the asshole part of me, uh, but I think it also frees other people to be angry at me. A lot of people have trouble being angry. Oh, he's so nice. I want to be angry. Oh, and he's, he's there for me. How can I, I, you know, and the point is if their choice is, Oh, I don't. I don't want to upset Dr. Goulston. He's so nice, and the only other choice is for them to beat the shit out of themselves or kill themselves. I mean, I you know, I, I'd rather you get it out on me. Uh, yeah. Than so, like, I actually have merch that says "Tough Love." I was kind of known as the Tough Love guy. Mm -hmm. So, do you think I've given people permission to just fire off at me? That's something else that just came to mind. Well, you, you, you know, I think it's. Uh, now, I think we've handled it is, is, is I want to vent. If I, if I vent at my kids in this day and age, they're going to report it to their teacher and we're going to get a, you know, child protective services are going to be calling me. You know, if I say it to my spouse who just drives me crazy, oh, I'm abusive. And so if I say it at work, I'm going to get fired and I need the job. So I'm crew. Oh, I know the great place. Road rage. Oh uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Road rage. Road rage is the place to where I can let it out to some, uh, to some anonymous person, everything I'm feeling pissed off about, or I can let it out at Chris because he can take it. In fact, there's something about Chris. He has the eating grin. He seems to like it. <laughs> and Chris is sort of saying, hit me with your best shot. You know, Chris, you got to change it. You got this big smile that invites someone to smack you with their words. Of course, people are going to send you hate stuff because they get such relief. Yeah. So, so to kind of wrap this thing up, like when I talk to you, it makes sense and it clicks. What would you, what advice would you give to me when people are doing this because I know I look like this tough 
manly man with my grin and I joke around and make fun, but I'm sensitive on the inside, Mark. So what suggestion do you have for me to just to deal with it? Because chances are I'm not changing too much, right? Like I'm still going to be big, loud, you know, and stuff like that. And how can I deal with it better? I, By the way, I just want to say this before – you give me this amazing advice. I've been using your 72 hour rule from talking crazy. I've been using that so much. My girlfriend can attest to that. Like I get a crazy idea and I want to snap at somebody or make a response video or say something really angry. And I'm like, give it 72 hours. I even put a reminder in my uh, phone calendar for three days, <laughs> for three days. But how do you recommend I deal with it? Being the person that invites letting people so here's what you say now you can even say uh i'm following doctor's orders um here is a directive to all the people who hate me can i look at them like this do i get your attention i imagine i do here's my challenge to you if you hate me because i know i've done really very little to you except annoy you i'll make a deal with you if you have the choice of hating me now, don't come and set my house on fire. But if you have the choice of hating me or hating someone close to you or hating someone at work and getting yourself fired or even hating yourself and ending up dead, I'd rather you hate me. Have at me. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll make a, a quick little snippet of that and just have the internet just save it, keep it on them. You know, but that, you know, it's, it's interesting too, because I developed, you know, these, these venting strategies for people trying to get sober and something I learned about myself through my own anger management is that the brain, like you were talking about, it wants to vent. It wants to get this anger out, but oftentimes it's misdirected, right? Like for example, maybe you get pissed off at work and you take it out on your kid or your spouse or whatever, right? So you're not angry at that person, you're angry at something else. So what I would tell my clients is, is like if you need to vent, vent at me. Call me, text me, let it out because you'll feel better and you won't take it out on the person that that you'll hurt in your life. And I'm I'm gonna do my best to try to adopt that mindset. Almost like I'm instructing these people, like, like exactly what you just said. Like, take it out on me. Don't take it out on yourself. Don't take it out on. Okay. So here's your tip. Advance. This is the advanced step to the 72 hour hold. So for people listening, what the 72 hour hold is, and I'm a shrink. We used to put people in 72 hour holds if we thought they were going to hurt someone or themselves. And in 72 hours, they would sort of calm down. And uh, with or without, I mean, meds help, but a lot of times you keep someone from hurting themselves or someone else, you know, the tropical storm's gonna leave. Mm -hmm. So Chris has been doing that and apparently he finds it sort of helpful. Here's the advanced training. This is gonna take a while. So the first thing is you say to yourself, don't make it worse for 72 hours. But here's the advanced thing. You say to yourself, Chris, take the hit and try to feel the hurt. Take the hit and try to feel the hurt. Because see, a lot of your anger is a way of avoiding hurt, fear, vulnerability. Uh -huh. Probably because there's a part of you that says, if I went on a channel really deep, well, Mark, you know, one of the reasons I don't want to feel hurt, fear, and vulnerability is between between you and me and the internet, there's a part of me that thinks I'm crazy. The down deep that I'm not glued together. <laughs> and I'm doing pretty well, much better than I used to. But there's a part of me that doesn't want to play Russian roulette because I don't know what it is, but down deep, I can talk tough, but I think there's something seriously wrong with me and I don't want to screw around with it. And I don't want to deep dig deep into the hurt and the fear or the paranoia because I'm doing pretty well. Am I a healed human being? Hell no. Am I coping better than I ever have? Yes. Coping better than you ever have ain't a bad, ain't a bad second. Would I like to heal? Would I like to feel solid? Would I like to feel calmer? Sure. But, you know, like you said, it's a work in progress. And you're right. When I feel a wounded animal is the most dangerous animal. But, but why? Because that wounded animal thinks the next wound is going to kill it. And, and that way down, as soon as that wound happens, 
that animal goes hurt, fear, panic. They don't feel any hurt, fear, panic. They attack. And that's too much who I am. So I'll, I'll listen to what you were saying because I've got the 72 hour thing, you know, don't make it worse. But let me see, you know, that might be a tougher one to swallow. Take the hit and feel the hurt. I understand that intellectually, I feel you're right. Mm-hmm. I don't particularly want to do it, Mark, but I have a feeling it would be good for me. Maybe I could be a role model. I mean, I got a lot of people that believe in me, whether I'm credentialed or not. So I just might try that. I, yeah, I definitely need to do it. I've been, I just like meditation is usually my go-to and it's just been extremely hard, hard recently. Like when you say like, feel it, like feeling it is me embracing what it feels like in me, right? Not attaching to those thoughts. Okay. So, here, so here's but, how you, so, okay. We're going to do rent a mentor. I'm your mentor. <laughs> Lay it on me. No, you know, and I have seven mentors and, and mentors were put on this earth to do a better job than our parents did. You know, and our parents were okay, but mentors, they're put on this earth to do a better job than our parents did. And, uh, and so here's what you do. And I do it every time I'm on a, a, uh, an interview and I feel, oh, I went on too long. Oh, I, you know, my stories were too long. Oh, I talked too slow. And what happened is I, I get into a pissing match with one of my dead mentors. And I'll say, oh, I can't believe how I was with Chris. You know, I mean, you know, he may not have credentials, but I do. And I think I dropped the F-bomb at least a half a dozen times. I mean, what the F-bomb was I thinking? And what happens is I let my dead mentors talk me down. They say, Mark, what did Chris think? Did he think you bombed? No, I actually think he thought it was pretty good. And so what are you so upset about? Well, I'm not polished. I'm not academic. Mm-hmm. I'm not classy. And, and they would say, but Mark people relate to you. If you were those other things, they wouldn't relate to. Yeah, yeah, but you know, when I, you know, it's probably why I don't hang out with other psychiatrists and whatever, when I'm with them, it's, you know, I feel like I'm a fraud. I'm the only one in this room who has never gone to an opera. (laughs) (laughs) You don't seem like the opera type though, Mark. Yeah, but the point is, so I invite you to use me with this new assignment, Mm -hmm. because I'm saying, take the hit, and feel the hurt. I want you to say, Mark, one ringy dingy. I'm calling you up in my mind. Yeah, well, what's this about, Chris? This is really f- Mark. <laughs> Take a hit and feel the hurt. <laughs> I've never swallowed such bullshit in 20 years. Uh, you know, it's a good thing you retired from the profession. You know, that's not in the DSM 93 manual for procedures and whatever. And I looked it up. Take a hit and feel the hurt. What the f- is wrong with you, Mark? And so have at me in your head. Deal. Can I, I, guess I like that. I like that idea. I can see you're licking your lips. Yep. Yep. So <laughs> I'm going to try it. And then when we do our next, uh, our next interview slash session, I'll let you know, know how that's going. But I personally gained a lot from this and I can't thank you enough. So yeah, every, everything is going to be linked down again below. All right, everybody. And make sure that you go check out the stay alive video um it's amazing it's broken up into pieces now i actually watched the whole thing all the way through to get the you know get it all in um but yeah that'll be linked down below and we'll see you soon mark take care my friend